Well, a guy was just kind of Neanderthal and through the tree roll last week and noticed I was disturbingly low on Buicks, which is kind of odd because I think it's my favorite make overall. Yep, probably. So I needed to fix that straight away. So I did the right thing and jumped on the line and bought one over the phone site unseen. And that brought me 100 miles from home to this beautiful 1963 Buick LeSabre behind me here. She is a Mordor crew cab, but it does have the 401 in it, which is pretty awesome. It hasn't been on the road in 23 years. That's, that's great. So I'm gonna see if it runs, and if it does, I'm just gonna drive it home. My name's Derek, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. I wonder if it has a key, actually. Should probably check, that'd be nice. I am apparently next to the busiest highway in all of North America. Let's do a once around here, see what kind of obvious parts I'm missing, then I just gotta start dialing for them. Really great cars, but it can be hard to find parts. I did find the key laying in there. She's aluminum and clearly homemade. That seems fine. Let's start in the trunk. Usually tell you everything you need to know about a rig. If parts are missing, they end up on the back seat or in the trunk. Oh, I wonder if this is stolen. Eh, can't be. Buick did such an amazing job with their styling in the 50s and 60s. It's really why I fell in love with the make. I mean, the chrome and everything is just, it's really good. All right, let's see what we got cooking back here. Key does work. It's musty. Smells like flooded basement, basically, and that is a new one on me. Hmm. What, what are you hunting for, bud? I got a whole winder back here, and a go to town blanket. Looks like an entry mat, and a really nice mouse nest. Got me a spare dryer sheet. That did nothing as far as smell goes. Is a little bit rusty back here around the supports. Mm, a little soft. Not horribly bad though. No idea what's under there. Probably won't look. It just, I'll feel more comfortable that way. See what else we got. See the plates there, 97. Some kind of really custom hitch. That is snazzy. Anything with angle iron on it, I'm in. Sold. Paint's got kind of a rust kind of color coming through. Was well, supposedly stored indoors, but not sure. Quarter isn't rotted out. Probably something under here. Being I see some mud. Hard to say. Fresh metal there. Just a spoosh of weight reduction there. Not bad though. Really doesn't have a ton of rust. Some of that typical moss. Seems like almost every car I get gotta have that. The chrome on the front is in really good shape. Actually, the grill's nice. Bumper's looking snazzy. This side, well, it's, it's a little bit differenter than the other side. I call this the grandma snag. And what this is usually Grandma will come out of the gas station and hit one of those concrete pylons and just drag her down the side. But all the metal is there. It's fixable. You just hook a chain on that one there and you just drag her this way. It'll come back around. The tires are, well, those look fine. You know, tread. Oh, we got tread. Don't worry about the rot then. The guy's really nice. Said he put this tire on for me. She's a Dunlop. 
which is better than the May Pops. Got a little bit of tread on there. But we got air in all four. We're off to a way better start than I'm used to. This one's a Prowler. I mean, that's classy. Two newer lug nuts. Well, let's jump into this thing. We got arts and crafts everywhere, but she's protected, so it's fine. Let's just get this up here. There we go. Safety first. Oh, we got the tittle in there. Some parts. There's the emblem to the grill. Oh, the smell. Well, let's just dive right in and see what we got. Seat looks really fancy. Oh, I got heavy dill pickles and ashtray in here. Like, really bad. Did you dump it on the floor? What happened in here? Oh, headliner is just scooping me right in the head. That's okay. We got a 37368. Definitely rolled over. Look at the brake pedal there. Oh, power brakes. That's nice. Everything's in here though, complete. Definitely test on that right away. Beep, beep. Probably shouldn't move those. They usually just stick down. She was an AC car. I'll be dipped. Oh, yeah, there's the, we definitely had some water leakage going on. Probably due to the giant hole in the glass up here. This is kind of slightly inconvenient, but we'll just have to kind of deal with it. All right, the size of these visors is impressive. This is like seven feet long. Guy needs that. What do we got here? What is it? We got uh, Blue Streak. I think these are O'Reilly's parts. Looks like all lightning equipment. Rotor button, lightning whirler. So she's been worked on. There's the tittle. That's good. Rolling in a 6.3. What do we got here? Oh, we got license plateage. I could definitely use that later. Extra headlights, some more dryer sheets. Let's just climb in back here, see what we got going on. Oh, missing arts and crafts. That's okay. I'm not upset about it. Floor? I mean, other than the severe mold that I'm breathing in, it's not so bad in here. Is this loose? It is. There's some redneck diamonds. Pretty good quality. I'd say grade C. A little bit of rust. Not horribly bad. Not bad at all. Rubber band. A little bit of road gravel. Speculators are missing. We'll get some 6 by 9s in there. Don't worry, Dr. Dre, we'll get her fixed. Yeah, let's take a smell test. What have we got? Oh, that's, it's fine. No, no, it really isn't at all. Well, I mean, it's a solid foundation. Tail lights are in it. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this just air a little bit. I wonder if the window rolls down. Wow. Just like she just left. Yeah, there's a lot of that smell. Just these. Why does it have 58 ashtrays? Why, I mean, what, why, why do you need so many? It's just the way she goes. Buick did really cool with this. Most all of their cars. The small crank was for the vent window. Which, for the poorer models, that's your AC. Flip that open, just drive faster, and it direct injects right into your eye bones. A little nervous to look underneath this moss. Oh yeah, she's just, we're just gonna slide that over. And that's fine, we'll just pretend we didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, what have we got? Any dead mice? Well, we got some droppings. That's not so bad. Hmm. Wiring looks halfway decent, other than, why do we have, is this? I think it is. Boop! What did that do? I don't know. Boop! We'll just turn it off. 
<sighs> a little nervous to see what that does. Okay. Well, let's pop the hood on this thing. See what we got going underneath the old power barn. You probably dumped your flip phone, what, 10 years ago? Why are you still running around with a bulky flip wallet? I switched to the Ridge. The convenient size fits literally in any pocket. They're expandable up to 12 cards, plus they carry all the cash you need. They come in 30 different colors and they have a lifetime warranty. That's just win, win, win. There's a lot of winning involved. Go to ridge.com forward slash VGG, check them out. If you want to grab one, use code VGG, you'll get 10% off. That's pretty slick. Yeah, fall's coming. Which reminds me, why do people always say it's chilly out? Who, who likes cold chili? I like mine piping hot. So, there's a little bit of ice cream out today. Winter's coming. What do we got? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's 92.7% bad. The remaining percentage is great because we've got a 410 Wildcat. Excellent. This here's the whole reason my eyeballs perked up on the La Sabre here. She's got the 410 Wildcat in her. That's the 401 block. They made a couple different flavors of that, but they supposedly named them by their torque rating. So she's got 410 foot pounders. Power brakes, power steering. And she's got the Wi-Fi AC compressor over here. She's been deleted on. Just kind of scanning here to see how many rodent deletes we got on the digitals. I've had some really bad luck recently. And this is looking pretty snazzy actually. Not bad at all. She's got anti-theft. Run them both red when you're dealing with electricity. That way you just burn the whole car to the ground instead of getting stolen. Oh, she's been fully tinkered on and it still doesn't run. So that's, that's great. But it's all here. It's all complete. Should have everything we need to get her home. Hopefully. We'll get the air cleaner off. We'll take a closer look at the unit here. <coughs> yep. Yeah. I'm pretty positive in 62 and 63, the 401s were standard in the Le Sabres. With the two barrel and this one is not locked up at all fuel line's been just snippelated off of it chocolator still hooked up we got coilage in here i'll bring you in again there's just we got new stuff to look at hmm. so here's what we got and if you listen I think the accelerator pump's working. Still got some fire make it happen or left in there from when the other guy was tinking on it. This is just snipped off there. But it's all, oh, that's, that's an easy fix though. A little bit of vacuum cleaner leak. Should be, should be good to go. So as usual, I'm gonna start by just confirming that it still turns over, guy says it does see how the starter's doing and then we'll jump right in we got to figure out you know does she got lightning make sure we can get fuel we're gonna have to set up some sort of fuel system i don't want to pull from the tank and right now it's hooked up so i'm positive that fuel is just going to be shot 23 years old how many years is it something like that i don't know let's just we got to get going guy's got my high quality Pittsburgh just hanging on the go left go right pump up here and if I'm lucky I can push the belts tight and just turn it from up here and see if the engine rotates that way a guy doesn't have to lay around on his back and figure something else out okay here we go yep. oh yeah positive turnage actually turns really easy much easier than I expected you gotta I need this back you gotta get in there thank you well she does roll over just smoother than a chrome valve cover and I ain't kidding you so that's great if the other fella couldn't get her running it's got to be the lightning whirler 
or something wrong with the fuel make it happen or it's probably just full of junk she's been succulating on this old varnish in the tank here and who knows what else so i'm going to start by disconnecting the pump over here before we throw a battery in her and see if she spins by the key that would be convenient listen if you face your hose clamps down we just can't be friends I should be able to do this from up top, but no. Here I am laying with the centipedes and box elder bugs. <sighs> I just, what is this, a five inch hose clamp on a fuel line? Never seen such Mickey Mouse stuff. What is going on? <sighs> is it that rotten? I can't believe this is just stuck on here like this. Does it need a plier? No, can't. Just, you are about to get cut off of here. Everything's just going great so far. The guy did end up just cutting her a little bit. That hose is harder than Hulk Hogan's bicep. So I just had to like ease off there. You know, a guy does just have a mountain of batteries. And for some reason, I ended up with a Bright Start Marine battery. That's fine. I was looking at her from the top and must have got excited about the goal handle and she's got 1,000 cranking amps. That ought to work. Hey, the posts are on the right side. When I hook these up, you gotta do the fire test. Just take a Lamont Look for flames. No major sparks. And then you just gotta kinda ease back and smell her in. I think we're good. I just smell burnt fryer grease and high trans. It's fine. Supposing on a guy I should check the oil a little bit before we start crankulating on her. Not too worried about causing any damage turning over at that low of an RPM, but you do it long enough, well, there's a little bit of potential. Mainly I want something in there because we stand a fighting chance to build a little bit of oil pressure up, so when she does fire off, you know, it's right there and ready. Oh, she is violently overfilled. Why? Hmm. Lots of gas and oil, that's why. So, probably means the cylinders are washed. The old power pumpers just ain't doing what they're supposed to. Fairly common when they sit this long, the rings just gotta come back around. Oil's not good, but good enough to see if it at least fires off and then we'll change on it. Hopefully those rings will come back around. Sometimes you just gotta blow the cobwebs out of them and They'll knock on your door again. Well, this Buick here is equipped with pretty similar steel me function as Ford Motors. Got everything you need right here. Guy can just take his plier. You're after the purple wire, jam it down into that. And then if you just touch it to the post, bingo. I am gonna hook up my Lone Wolf 6000 trigger though. Gives me a little bit of tether to work on. What have we got? Oh, four-wheeler. Yeah. Oh, another four-wheeler. Little guy. Good job. Yep. Oh, no. Well, the old starter contraption just doesn't sound happy on this rig. So we're going to have to keep an eye on her. Maybe two. No, nope. I'd rather keep an ear on it. Anyway, we're just, we're going to have to, we need to watch it is what I'm saying. Let's keep the start attempts down. Maybe she'll last for the whole day? Probably not. Let's move on to testing spark really quick. And then we're just gonna dump some fire maker in this thing and see if she barks off. Well, just to do a super fast test on the coil here. If you don't wanna get your 74,000 mode digital meter out, just get a wire or something, put it to ground. I just use this broken test light. And if I hold it right here, at the tip of that coil and spin it over. Should just get lightning coming out of that like crazy. 
So we'll test it here, see what we get. That's all I want a spinner. It's firing, but not, not the way I'd like to see it. Something's, I'm gonna pop the old lightning whirler off here, see what we got going on under that. Well, I'm three and a half feet from a railroad track and got gale force winds today, so. If the audio is bad, I'm sorry about that. I'll clean it up in editing though. Nope, because I don't know how. Oh, we got new partage in here, and I ain't kidding you. Well, sure enough, them parts we saw on the seat earlier, they've been replaced on. She's got new points in here and a whirler cap. You call these points or contacts? I don't know. Put it down there in the comments, just curious. I'm thinking the older fellers, they might call them contacts. Hard to say. I'm gonna check on them really quick. Might adjust them just a hair, throw the cap back on, and then uh, see what we get. Guy got a stop sign tip in there and adjusted on her. Business card works good. You can also just rotate it there. And you can see it. And usually hear it snap the lightning in there as well. So I'll throw the lightning whirler back on and see what we got. And then we got to test it at the plug as well. The reason I said I wasn't really liking it earlier, it seemed like it was only shooting lightning like four times per revolution. It should be a consistent spark when this is rolling over um, as those contacts open and close. So let's test it again and see if we've got an improvement. Yeah, there we go. So points just needed adjusted. We've got consistent spark now. Let's pull a plug or two. Where's the easiest one? Probably over here. Let's get that out of there and see what them are looking like. Bleep, 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 bleep. I'm a computer. No. I think I better dial back my soda drink mix a little bit or I'll never make it home. Oh, well, it's not seized in there. Just stay. Off to a good start, I guess. Easy. Well, yeah, she's pretty fouled up. I'm gonna pull another one. Mazel. I'm right here. Beep. That one was really loose. Hmm. Hello. What are you going to tell me? Oh, really? Okay. Guess old Uncle Derek's gonna preach on you for a minute here. One of the reasons I started this channel is try to get young adults and kids into hot rodding and classic cars, because if we don't save them, listen, feller, when they're gone, they're gone. But do me a favor and learn how to read spark plugs. It's a dying art, and a lot of people are just jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, let's throw a digital AFR gauge in it, and I'm done. Well. There's nothing wrong with the gauge, they work. I even use them from time to time on supercharged cars and stuff like that, but all they're doing is telling you your fuel mixture on the engine as a whole. If you learn the rain plugs, you can understand lean or rich condition at each cylinder. You can tell how your valves are doing. You can tell the condition of your rings. You can even see if you've got a coolant leak or a head gasket. It's all in the spark plug. And, well, Ours aren't looking too good. Well, from tasting on the oil earlier, guy can definitely tell there's a lot of fuel down there in the crankcase. And basically what's happening is our fuel mixture is leaking down past the rings, ends up in the oil. Clear indicator that the rings are worn or they're stuck. I'm gonna go with worn. We've got a lot of evidence on the sparkulators here that she's been burning oil for quite some time, so. The cylinders weren't recently washed. It's been an ongoing issue. So basically, you know, she's, it's, she's tired is what I'm saying. 140,000, accurate. Maybe even more, hard to say. We can do some things to try to rejuvenate on them, like an Italian tune-up, but when I get her back to the shop, we run a compression test on it. I bet she's gonna be down a little bit, you know. Well, let's throw some Firemaker in her, 
at least see if this thing fires off. I don't want to put any more money in it until I hear it run. And then we'll put some lightning hoses, sparkulators, put some new dinosaur sauce in it, and maybe the transmission will work. Nope, probably not. Guy drained this gas out of a snowblower I found for free in a ditch the other day. And I mean, it's bad, but we're gonna use it. Whoa! Yeah, that's way too much. Perfect. All right, let's see if we can start a fire. There's that starter. Uh-oh. Come on now, bring the thunder. Oh, I need to hook up my coil. <laughs> that might help. Rebring the thunder. Wow, that starter is just knocking on heaven's door. Come here now, guy. Listen, I need you to work. Just give me 10, 9, 7, 11. Give me 12 more starts, okay? I heard something. There's that starter again. Let's try it again. Well, why is it kicking out right when it fires? That's not going to be helpful. Uh-oh. Oh, we got a bad starter. Yes. And the fan clutch is also shot. She's just still whirling away in there. You don't need them. Well, by golly, she runs just like O.J. Simpson, and smokes heavily. Perfect. The guy did stand here and ponder for about a minute, 42 seconds. And I think I would like to hear it run just a little bit longer before I tear into this more. The guy just needs to put some confidence underneath his bibs, so you know what you're fighting for. I'm gonna try to bottle feed on her a little bit with some carb cleaner. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Still like a little more. Wow, this is... So here's the deal. The starter may be bad. Great. The guy's got a test on her a little bit. Guy likes to keep a jack under his rigs. That way when the jack stands fail on a guy, the rescue team can easily just jack her back up and drag my body out. I started wondering if I should maybe lay down on a blanket instead of them rocks, you know. Can I get it out of here? Oh, it just keeps re-hitting me. What's the plan? I don't have one. Well, let's not break this glass now. You need it. Okay, just ease. Ease it out. Oh, it smells like a chicken goop. Really bad. <clears throat> okay, I'm abandoning that idea. It's, I think I just, I'm gonna, I'd rather, I'd rather lay in the rocks. <clears throat> hey, she's fairly solid under here. Right in my mouth. Well, good news, bad news. Good news is, 
She's got a black heater. Bad news is, the way this exhaust is run, I'm probably not going to get this starter out without cutting the exhaust. She's got a Dynaflow in her. Hopefully the high and low accumulator actually work. That'd be nice. Okay, I'd like to take a nap, but let's try to get the starter out. Okay, let's never do that again. Great views. I'm on the bottom floor. Got this bolt out. I got this one up here yet I'm fighting on. And then I got to sneak it out of this little pocket right here and try to get it to turn. But I did notice while snoozing under here, my rod for my high accumulator is missing. This is accumulator here. And there's a rod on the back of the engine that's hooked to the throttle assembly. And the more throttle you give it, pulls this and actuates the accumulator here. And basically this cushions the shifting between the clutches. And you really need that rod. If we do get it running, I'm going to have to really stay out of the throttle. Or I'm going to have to try to rig something up. They tested these in M18 Hellcat tanks. True story. I just... I don't want to talk about it. Well, this one's rusty right out of the box, so that's great. I'm going to test this before I put it in because fool me once, I'll fool you back. Oh yeah, she twirls in there. See how this one's taunt? And this one is not. I could rebuild that, but for the sake of time and 42 bucks, let's just pop it in. Mistakes, they were made. Battle cries were cried. I already had the starter in, and here it is again out. See, when a feller gets in a hurry, he overlooks the details. This snout is not the same as that one. So, being I'm in BFE, the chances of getting another starter is, well, probably not going to happen. So I'm going to start dialing up some parts stores and see what happens. Might just have to pick up a rebuild kit. I don't know. Well, I guess the guy will be 78 and 22 with you. I ain't got no starter. Called every store within 100 miles and it's all special order and really expensive. Pulled apart the old one, thought maybe I could get her back together, but it's in really rough shape. But I think I got plenty of other stuff to do. Keep me busy for a while. I guess I'll be home for supper tonight. We'll come back after the starter comes in. I think I will change the sparkulators on it. And I got some lightning hoses too. I didn't really want to change them, but then I got thinking about it. I think I want to eliminate everything I can so once this thing fires up, we can truly understand what kind of shape the old girl's in, anyway. So I'll start there and then we'll probably change the oil too. All the sparkulators look the same on both sides. Not seeing any signs of mechanical damage, so that's good. These are the old school green painted porcelain ACs. They've been in there a long time. Probably gonna keep one actually. Well, the guy's got her up higher than a kite right now. Might as well scooch underneath, drain the old ground gravy out of it, and throw some new stuff in. These Buicks take a special wrench down here, you know. Mm. 
Okay. Let's see what a guy gets out of here. As long as there's no metal, really don't care. Really thin. It's all that gas in there. Not a ton of metal. That's good. Just a little bit, but that's normal. The guy got to looking under here, and it's actually really solid under here. This car really is not that bad at all. Probably one of the least rotten in my fleet, actually. Wonder what back here looks like. Tank looks kind of, I don't know, that might have been replaced at some point. Some odd muffler. Wonder what this side looks like. Yeah, that's just flaking. I mean, even the body mount bracket's solid on the old girl. Side looks good. Some expert exhaust work on this thing, might I add. I mean, that's pretty snazzy. Some more wire over there with a heat shield on her. Or is that a patch? I'm not quite sure. But overall, looks really good. Exhaust is slightly rotten right there. Here's some lineage. Hmm. Well, that's intact all the way back, too. Might consider getting that old tank running. Guy needs as many gallons as he can get his hands on if I'm going to drive this home. The little boat tank's only 10 gallons, and I just chew through that like you wouldn't believe. This is a return style system, too, I believe, so it goes quick. We might have to try to flush that, actually. Which shouldn't be too bad. Could probably just stick a hose down here and uh, suck it out into one jug like that. And then try to get some new fresh gas back in it. And then pull it up here. See what it looks like coming up here somewhere. Might have to replace that line now. This got a little short on me when I snipped that off. Dang it. The other thing I was looking at, this radiator is not looking too hot. I if it's too hot. Yeah, she's empty. So I don't know what we got going on here either. Didn't mind finding this in there. They've been running a Wix. That's an old guy. Couldn't find a new Wix, so I'm running a Mobile One filter in there. Derek's make your life easier tip 3,912. Write the date and the mileage on your filters, fellers. It just makes so much sense. I'm gonna fill her up with this here heavy duty diesel oil. It's got some fire on the front and stuff. Really sold me. But honestly, I've been using this quite a bit the last year and it's done pretty good, but mostly it's the cheapest. This diesel oil is Better than your standard conventional oil when it comes to old gams and lifters. I am just spilling more than getting it in there. That's okay. If 22.7% goes in, that's fine with me. Guy yeah, usually waits till pert near last. Check on the old whoa. Breaks, you know. Because a guy just never get some on these revivals and I'm not kidding you but I can't wait anymore I'm gonna pop the cover off this master cylinder here see what we got oh she's juicier than grandma's meatloaf and I ain't kidding you we do have some rust and foreign objects floating in there but I'm just gonna put the cap back on and pretend I didn't see that so that's good. Let's see what the pedal does. Do you guys think these dryer sheets actually do anything? Because I haven't had much luck with them. What is going on with this thing? Just I need some tape or something. Anyway, brake pedal. I mean, she's stiffer than a month old Twizzler. I'm not quite sure. I 
I don't think I've seen that before. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a. Power brakes, my butt. How about no brakes? Master cylinder, the rod's just stuck in that thing. And that's another part that I didn't bring, of course. Why wouldn't I do that? You'd never have brakes. Life's mysteries. Well, she definitely needs a brake master cylinder, and that is a slippery slope. You start breaking fittings and brake lines, and it just, where does it end? You guys have been there with me on that one. I think I definitely want to hear it run first before I dive into that. Got a starter ordered. It's going to be a few days. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. We got everything kind of maintenanced and ready to go. Next time, we'll throw that starter in. Make sure she runs. It's going to get interesting with what we're seeing so far. Test on the transmission, and then maybe we'll get brakes and just scoot it home. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. How did I make such a mess around this thing? Wasn't here that long for Pete's sake.